Good Monday morning, everyone. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets. And Jim, let's begin with uh, Merck CEO Ken Frazier stepping down from Trump's business council. And everybody has a right to speak their mind. The president has a right to speak his mind. Merck's uh, CEO has a right to speak his mind. Mr. Frazier is known as someone who has held the line on uh, drugs by not overhyping his drugs. He could have much bigger sales of Keytruda. So uh, I certainly applaud Mr. Frazier for speaking his mind. Uh, I think Mr. Trump had every right to be saying, hey, listen, you know, that that's not what I wanted. Mm. That's certainly right. I, I would not have done the he's going now to gouge prices because that's not been Mr. Frazier's way. So I think that people can agree to disagree without name calling. Mm. Now, you can say, well, wait a second, Frazier name called Trump. But, you know, I, I can just tell you that. If you look at the drug industry, Mr. Frazier is kind of renowned as someone who has uh, not hyped his drugs so he can have more sales. And, and so I would hit him for anything but not that one. Hmm. Well, why aren't we seeing pharma stocks drop on that Trump tweet about ripoff prices? Well, because he's not done anything along hmm. those lines. And um, uh, but I'd like to hear from Vice President Pence on this. He's hmm. very close to Eli Lilly, an action alert name. Hmm. Um, because uh, the president's bark has been worse than his bite. Now, maybe suddenly he turns on the industry because of Mr. Frazier. And, you know, that's part of, it's a different world now. Maybe you, that's what he does. Do you think we'll see more CEOs depart from Trump's business council? I think it's, um, if, if there's measures of, of conscience, mm. yes, uh, because uh, there were people who weren't happy with Greenhouse. And, you know, look, he, he's a man, put together a manufacturing council. And, um, and there are people who have many different constituencies, and Mr. Frazier has different constituencies, uh, and he can't just be uh, his only... Now, you could say, well, listen, his constituency, like the Marines, is country. And, and, but I think that Mr. Frazier would say, my constituency is country, too, and my view of the country is different from the president's. But um, these are tricky issues because we're not used to seeing um, retribution so quick as opposed to, I understand what Mr. Frazier says, and I wish him well. Um, but that's not the, our president's style, and I think we all know that when you take a stand against the president, you should expect uh, a harsh retribution. That's the way he is. And, you know, when you throw your lot in with the president and you don't disagree with, the, and you disagree with the president, I expect that you're gonna get hammered. So I think everybody on the council should recognize that they can get hammered if they leave. That, that's kind of his way, and we have to get used to his way, is what I'm saying. We have to get used to it. I mean, Mr. Frazier, I think, uh, when he left, uh, I think he had to expect that it wouldn't just be, I wish you well, because that's not been the president's way. He's a different kind of president. All right, Jim, let's move on to the markets. The Dow is back near 22,000. Can you explain this market rebound? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of the sell-off was because some people came on air who were very bearish at CNBC. A lot of the uh, sell-off was because there were people who expected that there could be nuclear war. I think that what happened is, is that the Chinese showed their true colors, which is if you attack North Korea, you attack us, not unlike in 1951. Um, and I think there was a genuine recognition that who the Chinese are, it, they've always been the same. They've always been the principal backer of North Korea. I don't. I never understood why people don't understand that, um, because there's never been a moment in history that there's been any distance between North Korea and China. Uh, and uh, General MacArthur thought there was, and he was fired for it. Mm. And, and Jim, I saw in your Real Money column, you, you talk about the importance of listening to yourself. Explain that for us. Well, I mean, I just think that, that before you, when you look at the long run of a Netflix or an Apple mm. or a Facebook, and you, people say, well, why didn't I have that? And the answer is, is because they're usually scared out of stocks. Now, some of them just made so much money that they took money off the table, and there's never anything wrong with taking a profit. But I think that there's a, um, there's a, a level of fear that can be stoked very reasonably. Um, but if you read my, if you read Confessions of a Street Addict, I talk about the need to be responsible and the need to be able to say, okay, look, just because a guy, whether it's me, whether anybody else, says it's time to get out, remember, they could change their mind uh, and, and you have to do your own work because you're not gonna find out if they change their mind. So those who do what a uh, money manager say, whether it be to buy the banks, then it turns out they sold the banks, whether it be buy Macy's and then Macy's doesn't work at 70 and it goes to 20, I think you just do your own work mm. 
Um, I, I favor index funds. Uh, and I favor putting money in index funds and uh, each month and then when they really get hit in a given year you can put a couple of months to work then uh, for mad money I think that you have to let that money ride as long as the story checks out uh, but I understand I, I, I don't like see fear of, of, of losing money in Apple has kept people from owning Apple mm. fear of, of Facebook uh, dropping suddenly uh, has kept people from owning fa Facebook and I just think that fear of, list, you know, when you hear a manager who's very fearful uh, or is, you know, just saying, listen, maybe you're too complacent. What I'm urging you to say is, OK, well, listen, maybe I am complacent in your term, but I have a, a, a faith in a company and management. And so therefore, I side more with Warren Buffett, mm. who's an index fund aficionado, than I do with Mr. Marks. Mm. Uh, speaking of reasons to buy stocks on this Monday on Squawk on the Street, you highlighted VMware. Well, VMware pre-announced better inspected quarter. Let's also talk about Bitcoin crossing 4,000. Any thoughts there? Well, uh, Bitcoin is, um, uh, it, it's sui generis. I mean, what Bitcoin does uh, is not fathomable for me. I came out on The Good Wife and said <laughs> Bitcoin should be bought at 200. And I'm on record. Who else said that, that it was, should be bought at 200? I don't think anybody did. And I wouldn't have said it if I didn't agree with it. <laughs> what a call that was. Yeah. I said, okay, that's reasonable. I didn't have to say it. But you did, and we're glad you did. Yeah, you can go. I get royalties all the time for when it runs. <laughs> so, Jim, is this going to help NVIDIA, which had uh, two... NVIDIA actually talked about it. Uh, AMD would not give it any credit. NVIDIA, I think because it's, uh, you know, so it's, it's a big use of NVIDIA. There are people who said NVIDIA is not connected with Bitcoin, um, and, and uh, they just said they were on, on the conference mm -hmm. call. There's a lot of disinformation about, about these cryptocurrencies, mm. but uh, NVIDIA directly related some of the strength in the quarter, of which it was great. And you should read Eric Johnson, he's mm. the best on it, to, uh, to cryptocurrencies. All right, Jim, you mentioned Netflix earlier. They've just hired Chandra Rhimes from ABC. I think if you go read Buster Cohen stuff, mm. and he did a, a lot of stuff on Netflix, you have to go into the archives. I hope you can call it up. Um, at C-O-E-N. I think what you recognize is that Netflix w saw Disney coming mm. um, and has worked very hard to be able to develop uh, programming in case others pull. Um, it's not as centrally important as it used to be. Mm. All right, moving on, uh, Procter & Gamble taking a, a shot at Nelson Peltz. Yeah, I mean, they said his agenda is, uh, you know, kind of selfish, but his agenda is to have the uh, stock go up. So uh, I would have picked, I, 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 that's an ill-advised way to attack it, mm. I think. All right, Jim, we'll end as we always do with earnings to watch. We have two retail names, TJX and Home Depot. Well, TJX has been acting terribly, and uh, we own a fraction alert. Home Depot's been acting terribly. Uh, I, I think that um, they both have longer-term theses. Uh, TJX, if you listen to Macy's and you listen to uh, JCPenney, you know that they have a lot of merchandise they offloaded, and that's usually very good for TJX. Um, and, and I think that that's you know, a major focus. Uh, I think that Home Depot uh, stock has come down. They're really levered to household formation, uh, less than they are levered to what Amazon may be doing. All right, Jim, before we let you go, you're wearing a red tie. You made a lot of tomato sauce this weekend. Yes, I did, <laughs> and you know, I had my whole family doing it, and it's something that I really care about, so I ran a bunch of pictures, and it is uh, great fun to cook with your whole family. It, everybody has a job to do, and uh, I like it very much. Jim Kramer, thank, thank you. you so much as always. All right, for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.